Hey guys, what's going on here? Uh, this, I'll give you a heads up. If you're looking at the screen, I will be catching rock tails this whole time. We got Thomas and Skype, and we will be doing the question and answer video that you guys have been waiting for. So Thomas, say hello. Hey guys, what's up? It's Thomas here. Okay, we'll start <laughs> We'll start it off with the most, you know, awaited question everyone's been wondering. Thomas, how has your mom been? <laughs> your mom? Oh, okay. And like the good old days where we used to have a rap battle. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh. That wasn't in the list of questions that you sent. <laughs> yeah, I knew that you would be mad if I put that one in there in writing. <laughs> okay, um, no, but honestly, guys, uh, this is going to be a video to mainly kind of get you guys some answers that... You know, kind of everyone's been wondering. I've seen on forums and just some that have crossed my mind after talking to Thomas behind the scenes and um, stuff that I've been helping him out with and stuff like that. So, you ready, Thomas? Yeah, let's get it started, man. All right. So, with the revival of Devious, do you feel the staff team and developers are currently have and will be able to manage everything uh, to make this server uh, remember a rememberable one? Yeah, I see. So, uh, so uh, as many of you know, I've been with Artero for a long time, and of course, tons of other servers that I've been staff on. And I've always realized that most private servers they cannot run without staff online, and that's exactly what I really wanted to ch really wanted to change now. So, um, I'm really lenient on bannings. I'm really, really lenient on like muting. Sync, for example, like everything is run by the server, and it's not like oh, there's no staff online. Shit, the server cannot run. Uh, let's go promote all these random kids that uh, don't actually deserve moderator so that we at least have staff online. So yeah, the current staff team, um, I chose them all manually, I handpicked. I chose, for example, David. He, I used to work for him on DVSPK in 2012. Great guy, you know, tons of experience. I, I got Sean working, you know, all these old veteran players who I just know I can trust. They're very mature, and that's uh, exactly what I needed from a uh, staff team. So to answer the question, I, uh, <laughs> and what do you think of uh, Gliss as a developer? I know we've seen some of his work in Adoro and stuff like that, and I know Danielle is also doing some side developing. Yeah, yeah. so Gliss and I we're, we're really good friends in real life as well. We meet each other a lot, and uh, but on the developing side, you know, uh, I do yeah, of course a little bit of developing myself. Of course, I'm not that good, but uh, you know, if you tell Gliss this has to be fixed now, he'll wake up, he'll come do it, he'll fix it right away. I mean, he's a super reliant guy. Uh, of course, I'm not the best coder, but from what <laughs> I know, he's one of the best coders I have ever worked with. He's super fast. He's also introduced all these uh, new programs that we use, such as Mongo, the, the, the program we use, and it's just, it's really nice to use. Uh, just great developer, really, overall. Would you put him up there with Martin from DVSPK? Yeah, like... Of course, when I, when I still worked with Martin, I was like what sixteen or something, yeah. and uh, I, I didn't know I didn't know shit, of course. But uh, yeah, Martin, of course, when he released something, it would be basically like bug proof. But it just took him so long to do everything, yeah. and I feel like Gliss just like he does everything so fast. It's just weird. No, it's definitely it's nice to see. Yeah, it's really good. He's a great uh, contribution to the server, man. I agree. Um, do you have any long-term projects that you could possibly give anyone, you know, a little bit of a hint towards or a tease of something for them to look forward to? Uh, yeah, something that I'm personally working on that I thought was, like, very original in the private server, like, industry is our uh, play and get paid system. So I always thought, like, it would be a nice idea to, like, it would, uh, yeah, how can I explain this easily? <laughs> Basically, instead of uh, players being able to sell their gold to other players for like PayPal, which is of course illegal on most servers, uh, you would actually be able to sell it to the server itself. Basically, eliminating the real world trading, um, it would be a we would have a better control of the economy. For example, uh, that's something that I really want to be working on. But once the server grows a bit, and then I know that uh, Gliss, of course, has uh, tons of projects like. <laughs> the PvP mini games and uh, yeah there's just so much stuff to do now I, I don't recall like out of my head what our big projects are but we're mostly just gonna let the community decide we're gonna give a few options and then the people can decide what they really want sounds interesting um, <laughs> do you feel releasing it with some minor bugs and not full functionality is gonna set you back long term so since the release you know we've had some minor things come up um, but do you think that's really putting you 
behind? Yeah, of course we had a really long period of the uh, of our beta server where we took out like a lot of bug fixes, and uh, yeah, when, once we finally released the server, it was a bit of a hassle. Of course, maybe we could have done another week or so, but yeah, to be very honest, it was kind of demotivating to like keep going in the beta and keep trying to fix things. Like we just really wanted to release the server, and then with all the new players, like we knew that they were gonna report the bugs, but. Yeah, we weren't. Uh, how are we? we weren't very like um, expecting this many problems to actually still occur. But yeah. uh, we have a nice list of the bugs that we have to fix right now, and like Gliss is going through them as fast as he can. So yeah, I guess uh, in long term, no. In the long term, no. Short term, yes. All right. No, I understand that. Um, with the whole um, donation and voting shop revival. And the economy starting to, you know, kind of get settled and steady. Um, is there anything that you can kind of have any of the players look forward to seeing in the shops that no one has really suggested or mentioned? So my real idea with the voting shop was to just keep it not really as a money-making with method. So we don't really want abusing to happen, like vote botting and shit like that. We just want to keep it cosmetic and just like the basics. And, uh, yeah, I put some items in there which are extremely expensive. So I thought that would be a fun uh, thing to have in there. So, like, maybe in a few months we can have uh, players walking around with these super, uh, like, rare items, which only a few people have. And then donator shop-wise, uh, I still really need to look through that. But, um, yeah, we have this mystery box in there, which is pretty cool. It's like uh, 8,000 donator points. Yeah. You can basically get any item in there. You can even get like the Christmas cracker, which is like 1,000. Yeah, I was going to talk to you, and hopefully we'll be able to open some of them up on video today. Oh, yeah, we could probably do that. All right. Um, with the whole, you know, assuming we release a donation and vote shop, you know, fully functional when it comes out, uh, are you planning on doing any promotions whether it be double donation points or double xp or double vote points or anything like that definitely we're doing that we actually wanted to do it already before but just because we're always working on the debugging and uh, adding the content that should have been there already we just haven't really had the time yet but definitely i will guarantee that the next month which also will be our month where our marketing will really start to uh, like to start to start there will definitely be some uh, double XP or double voting points. I believe we're releasing voting today even, or it, it should have been released actually already. I'm not sure yet. But, uh, yeah, we will definitely start with uh, some double voting points just to compensate with the voting being down so long. So you can, you can uh, definitely uh, prepare for that. All right. Um, do you want to shed some light on the rumors about a comp cakes or a max cape after we have these achievements now? Of course, this is an uh, economy server. It's all about the grind. It's all about the scoreboard. So uh, Maxcape, Compcape will definitely be coming out soon. But uh, it's not on our priority list, obviously. I, I assume it doesn't take that long to make. But I assume that a lot of people are maxed yet. And uh, But all the, all the skills should be working uh, very soon. All right. Um, do you plan on approaching the gambling scene with an invisible hand technique um, approach in the economy, so kind of meaning you'll you'll have some players kind of that you understand and you trust of how they're going to run and keep the economy clean. So I've discussed the gambling issue with a few very respected uh, gamblers in the RuneScape private server community. So like I said before, I want a server that can be run or can, that can be ran without staff online. And of course, gambling only causes problem. I'm mean, talking about experience only, like. It's, it's 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 a mess, but I also don't want to have a uh, like an NPC that does it for you. You know, it takes away like the feel of getting that trust in the community that you can hold an item. So my idea was, uh, I'm not 100% sure about it yet. I still have to discuss it with uh, these respected dicers. But to simply make a clan chat, make these uh, dicers very um, these respected dicers hosts, which uh, is going to cost X amount of money and then we're just going to keep uh, we're going to use the confirm method so you're going to have to confirm it in the clan chat and then if there is a problem someone scams for example it will be super easy for us to look back on it because yeah well we have all the logs we have chat logs clan chat logs private lessons logs 
But with this confirmation system, it will be super easy. And yeah, okay, you're gonna have to st have to have a staff member to fix it, but maybe it will take two minutes. So that's oh. really what I want to do. All right. Um, with uh, you mentioned scoreboards earlier with the whole max cape and comp cape, um, do you think you'll you or Gliss will have some sort of high scores PHP based on the forums? Uh, oh yes, of course. That's what uh, our co-owner Arthur is working on right now. He's working on a dashboard, just like on. Ooh, I'm not sure how much I can say about this, but <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a. If you're familiar with the RuneScape uh, EOC, they have this thing called the Adventurers Log. Yep. Now that is almost finished already. So All on right. the on the website, you will be able to see how many kills you have on these monsters, your skills, uh, the scoreboards, time logged in. Uh, all these nice features. There will definitely be forum to in-game linking, but I'm not sure when this is coming out. It's still in, like, it's obviously going to take some time, but it's being worked on. It, it, it's what he's doing right now. So is Arthur behind the scenes a lot with the forums management then, and not everyone's fully aware of his role? Yes, yeah, so we kind of put it in uh, Arthur's position is not in the community. We, okay. He doesn't. He, he's not interacting with us. Or uh, well, I mean, with the community, he's. Uh, had to, I can tell you the the rules that we set for each other. So we have Gliss, of course. Gliss is the our main developer. He decides what content is released. Uh, he's of course also the manager of the developing team. Then you have me. I'm in charge of uh, uh, yeah the forums in game, the staff team. Kind of like in a kind of a managing position, and then you have uh, Arthur, who is in charge of uh, money-related issues. He talks to, uh, he's in charge of the the protection, the marketing, and uh, at the moment he's also working on uh, the f website and uh, the dashboard that we're making for the players. All right, then I'm going to skip to one of the other questions since you just brought that up. Um, so for future staff positions, do you think you'll be structuring it similar to Adro with a community manager, head moderator, mo and helpers? Uh, I'm not sure about that yet. Like, the, uh, I, I'm really picky when I pick my staff because I feel like staff is very important. Like, the staff members that you have, they have to be professional. I don't want them to be ranting on the forums. Like, if any staff members are listening right now, if I do see you ranting on the forums, I will go behind you. So, yeah, just, uh, I'm not sure. I, I really don't know. I, I will have a community manager, but I assume that every staff member is going to take that position of taking initiative, of taking community roles and stuff like that. All right. Um, do you, uh, I mentioned this in the early beta stages, I, I think it's something the community wanted. Do you think Gliss would be capable of introducing some sort of Iron Man self-efficient uh, trade restricted mode, um, seeing as this is an economy server and it could show some real potential? Yes, definitely. Uh, I've already had some people suggesting it to me, but uh, I feel like at the moment it wouldn't be a, a good idea to release an Iron Man mode already as we already are a low on player count and if you have like two people playing two different modes it will just be uh, not efficient and I don't think it's going to benefit the server but in the future if people want it if the community wants it we definitely will release it all right um, comparing yourself to Adro PK do you think um, do you think there will be some strengths and weaknesses of the two different servers uh, well I don't understand the question so how Adoro PK draws in a lot of its players is with its, you know, you're ready to log in and PK and um, just kind of have all these really overpowered weapons at your choice. Um, do you think that kind of puts you at a disadvantage for an economy server? Yeah, of course, you need to take a whole different marketing approach. But, um, yeah, this is really the uh, Arthur's uh, section. Okay. Uh, he really knows. Uh, I, I trust Arthur with uh, his marketing plan. But, of course, uh, yeah, it's just how you uh, market your uh, server now. It's gonna, we are going to have to take a different approach than uh, Artera. All right. Um, do you think that you will be doing any promotional community events, in, such as giveaways through Facebook, YouTube, or community raffles? Definitely. We're really trying to use all of the sources we have, such as Facebook, Twitter, and all these other other methods. So uh, once um, 
the Facebook group, of course, have already been made, and Twitter, all the accounts have been made. But um, yeah, I feel like if I start doing giveaways on the Facebook now, we won't get the response that I really want. So I'm just currently waiting, really, until next month when our marketing plan comes to action, because then I think it will be more effective. But those will definitely be coming because I used to do those on Artero as well, and they were very um, effective. All right. Do you think so far um, that the release has been, you know, quite a success lately? I mean, I've, we've been averaging almost 20 players at peak times, 30 some days on the weekends and stuff like that. Yeah, so we were very happy about the release. The first few days were uh, amazing. We didn't expect uh, to have that much support. But then, of course, we need to constantly uh, get new players because the players who are currently playing slowly start leaving. Yep. So that was the main problem for us because I'll be honest, we we made a mistake with our marketing. Um, it should have been done months ago, but we didn't. So now most of the marketing spots that we want to buy are not available anymore. So now we're going to have to wait because now, now of course, there are always spots that we can buy, but they're not as yeah, effective as the spots that I wanted. Yep. So that is a bit of the issue that we're going through now, but I believe that we can get through that um, for sure. All right. Um, let's see, where are we at? Um, with the you know old school RuneScape being such a popular thing, do you think that we're going to have a hybrid of some of those items in this um, server, such as, you know, the other weapons, um, serpentine helms and mm -hmm. stuff like that? Uh, definitely. I already talked to Gliss about this before. We can introduce basically any item in any color that we would like. So if the community wants it, we will give it to them. All right. Um, now this one, bringing us back to the donation shop, I thought this was a very clever idea, and a few other members of uh, um, the community also kind of chipped in. Um, would you consider doing an elite donation reward that would be some sort of random dunge armor pack um, that is strictly cosmetic, so make sure that these dunge armors have no other purpose than to show off how dedicated you are to donating to the server? As in, for example, you pay three hundred or you donate three hundred dollars. You spend all that money on dragon claws, but you still get a reward for donating three hundred dollars. No, no. So as in this item. So say, um, you remember how you had the the box of wine in the original Devious PK? Yes. Okay. So imagine like you have a crate or something that you buy in the donator shop, and you open it. And it gives you one full dungeoneering set at random and make sure these dunge sets have no other purpose than being strictly cosmetic. Okay, so they will be in a donated shop for X amount of donator points. Correct, but just like the Christmas cracker, have it be a random um, I see, dunge I see. armor set. I, uh, I must have overlooked that uh, suggestion. I... Uh, was it on the forums? No, this was something that ah. I've uh, cooked up with a couple members on Skype uh, that are old veterans, and we thought this would be a very interesting way to show your dedication to the server. Yeah, no, that does sound like a good idea. I will write it down now so I can add it to the donator shop because that's uh, on my list for things to do today. All right. So, okay, great. Thanks uh, for the suggestion. Um, on top of that, I know me and you have personally talked about it. I didn't know if you wanted to address the community um, publicly. If not, then mm -hmm. feel free, don't answer. Um, with the previous donators of the original Devious PS, will they be getting their points and some compensation back? Or what do you? how do you feel about that situation? Yes, okay. So I will explain this uh, very clearly. So Devious PS of a few months ago and this DPS are totally different servers. Of course, we realize that people donated a lot of money uh, on the old DVSPS, so I think it would be uh, inhumane for us to not give you some type of refund. So we sat down with all the owners and we decided that we will refund all of the donated points, or all of the, yeah, the donated points that you spent on the old DV DVSPS and we'll refund them to you on this DVSPS. Now, when is that going to be coming? Like I said before, we're extremely busy with the debugging, but I will promise you that I will make a post on the forums explaining what to, what to do 
uh, who to contact, and you will get your points back for sure. We will give you the donated points on this DBSPS. All right. Um, Did I clear it up? <laughs> yes. No, I, I, I knew personally, I knew what the <laughs> response was. I just wanted to make sure if the community was still curious. Yeah, um, our apologies for it uh, taking so long, but uh, we have, we've been very busy. Do you think uh, having a possible team speak would be something that the community can be look forward to? Yes, of course. You know, I'm a big fan of uh, the team speak. All right. So uh, that will definitely be coming out uh, most likely next month with the uh, in August with the marketing uh, plan also going into action. All right. And with the the current poll on forums right now is the Slayer revamp. Do you think we might see a boss that is strictly Slayer assignments to keep people motivated to achieve 200 mil Slayer? Sorry, could you repeat the question? So you know how on forums you have the Slayer revamp poll? Yes, yes. Do you think that there will be bosses that are only have the ability to be killed when they're on a Slayer task and give some sort of either highly rewarding drop or highly rewarding XP? Who have uh, not discussed it with anyone or haven't heard it from anyone either, but... Um... Of course, that's, that could be a great suggestion. We would just have to find a uh, a boss suitable for that. All right. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that would be fun to have a Slayer monster that you can all you know. It comes at the possibility of or possibility that option of randomness of getting that Slayer task and then actually having to kill that monster. All right. But yeah, no. If 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 that's uh, we might we might pull it later. If that's what people want, then that's just what we will make. All right, and then the big thing with the early grind of a lot of people grinding out Slayer, the main thing I'm sure you've seen everyone ranting is what's going on with the whips. The drop rate is insane. <laughs> you have people going 20 hours dry. You have people going five minutes and they have two whips. Like, do you think we will see improvement on the whip specific drop rate, or do you are you comfortable where it's at right now? Okay, I'm going to. I'm in the database right now. <laughs> One moment, for you, please. Abyssal Demon, okay. Okay, I'm going to check for you what I put it at. I remember editing it because there's also another item in it that I'm fixing today, which should have actually been the pet, but it's actually something else. Interesting. Okay, so if I'm correct, the whip ID is 4249, right? That does sound correct off the top of my head. Wait, I'm going to check it for you. <laughs> Abyssal Whip. No, four hundred five hundred. Yes, uh, surprisingly enough, guys, I, I put it at rare. So we also have a legendary one, we have legendary two, and we also have legendary three. So rare is, to be honest, it's it's quite a high drop rate. It and it it's it just shocks me though. There's probably still less than a dozen whips in the game right now. We've had people, including myself camp there for almost a whole day and a half and not received received a whip yet I think I know why though because um, if you if you look at it there are also a lot of other rare items in the drop table so you've probably have received um, a lot of, an item that was in the rare drop table but it just wasn't the whip but for now I see how it I, is I so you're really <laughs> screwing us over here Thomas <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's good that you don't know which items I also put in there <laughs> yeah it's gonna be something stupid oh I just got ashes oh that's on the <laughs> that's on the legendary drop table right now guys yeah okay Thomas no I will um, we will be putting the drop table on the forms as well but so it's on rare right now and if I wouldn't have put it on rare it would be on uncommon okay and I think that is a bit overpowered. No, I, I definitely understand that. Yeah, it's probably also just your luck, James. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, Thomas. That wraps up the questions. Would you like to log in game and let the community see what happens when we open ten community or mystery boxes? Okay, one moment, please. Yep. I quickly need to find the uh, the ID. Do, 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 do. Actually, do I need to find the ID? I'll just give myself some donator points. And then teleport James to you so we can do this. Okay. X tell it to me. Uh, 
have all these people private messaging me about solving issues. Okay, um, what was the ID of this again? One moment, let me check uh, on the database what it was again. Just do semi semi give donator points, Thomas. Yes, Ten but million. The, yeah, but the, but the problem is um, there's only two mystery boxes in the shop. Yeah, it's a uh, security. Oh, while we're here, we might as well bring it up just for the sake of it. Why is there super energy potions in the donator shop? Was that just a mistyped ID, or what were we thinking at this point in time? I, everyone has been kind of curious at this point. And we have several gnolls in this voting point shop. Oh, I don't know. Thomas is all, you guys are seeing <laughs> Thomas live making these mistakes, just so you know. <laughs> I am actually not sure. They were already in there at the beginning. That's why I'm a bit confused. I think they were still in... Okay, one moment. Let me just quickly write this down that I can fix it. Yeah, we can also just keep it in as like a troll, you know? <laughs> oh, yes, that's what the, the community wants to see. That's definitely what we're going to spend our time developing on. <laughs> no, I'm going to remove those. That is stupid for them to be there. Okay. The ID is... I believe this is the ID. Yeah, okay, cool. I got it. Alright. So, do you have an uh, empty inventory? Uh, let me go bank, I guess. I had 24 spaces opened. All right, guys, so Thomas has hinted that we could possibly get a Christmas cracker from these mystery boxes. Let it see if Thomas is just pulling our chain or if we're actually going to have any good luck here. Also, uh, there's been a quite change with the mystery boxes. <laughs> You'll oh, notice when you, start, when you start opening them. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here, guys. Okay, we're going to do it slowly to preserve our reactions. Okay, so we got some Ringmaster boots. Those are in the shop. We got Ringmaster hat. So it looks like we're starting the full Ringmaster. Okay, so we got some Pernix, so we can get some next sets. We get more Ringmaster. So we got Virtus now, so we're getting part of next. So we got the double experience lamp, everything in the donator shop so far. I'm pretty sure we have full Ringmaster currently after seven of them right now. Then we get Pernix again. Okay, we got the first H. Ween mask at this point in time. Okay, now we got Virtus. We got two pieces. We got another cowl for Pernix. Let's see. Okay, we got one claw so far. We got another Virtus top. We got some Ringmaster. We get an AGS. Some more Ringmaster. Some more Ringmaster. And some more Ringmaster. And a little bit more Ringmaster. Some more Virtus. Some Pernix. So no Torva yet. Okay, so we got our bunny ears now. Some Ringmaster. And it is currently pouring outside and my car windows are open. We got another AGS. <laughs> another AGS. Another Cowl. And some Dragon Claws. So that Thomas, it? yeah. What happen? Can you spawn us a Christmas Cracker so we can see what happens when you open a Christmas Cracker? Yes. Uh, we did make it that you don't have to use the Christmas Cracker on someone else. Okay. Yeah, because if uh, the other player gets a Christmas cracker, that's a bit shitty, of course. So, um, one moment. <laughs> we'll give them back, guys. We were hoping Thomas wouldn't notice our awesome one ticking skills. Um, and I see everything. <laughs> oh, our logs are actually amazing. We can literally see everything. Anyway, okay, let me uh, get the Christmas cracker for you. Uh, and are the current party hats, is there a specific rare one right now with the rates? Yes, or? Okay. we have uh, the rarity of the, of, the, of the normal Christmas cracker. So it would be that the purple one would be the most rare. The purple, the most hideous Christmas or party hat you could pick. That is what it, it is on the original game. You are awful. All right, guys, let's see oh. what we get from this Christmas cracker. If it's a purple one, this proves Thomas that he cheated, and it's really the most common one, and he lied to us. Which one is it? It's red? purple! No. <laughs> guys, Thomas is a liar. 
he, he just killed all my future RNG for this game right now. Nah, I hope you guys right, are aware but... of that. <laughs> oh, hey, fuck you got an achievement for it, right? Oh, I did! Yeah, I'm gonna have to remove that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sorry. I'm gonna have to remove that. <laughs> Damn. Okay, guys. Um, that wraps up all the questions that I've had with Thomas. Um, I hope you guys do like the video, even though it is very lengthy. Um, I hope it does shed some light. And you will see Thomas making more videos in the future, hopefully, with me. Uh, thank you very much for having me, James. Anytime, Thomas. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>